Sharon Weston Broom was the first African-American female elected to the legislature in East and West Baton Rouge parishes in 1988 and was the first woman elected as the leader of the capital city of Louisiana in 2017. As mayor president, her focus has been to unite the citizens around the common goals of equality in education, economic development, justice, housing, and other quality ways of life. Move with the Mayor is an initiative that promotes a more active lifestyle through various community-led events. Last year, Sharon joined existing running clubs, bike rides, walks, and even physical education classes, and exercised with over 200 residents in the last quarter of 2018. This year, she plans to double the number of exercise groups, clubs, or just groups of friends who want to move with the Mayor. She is also one of a few UWL alums who have received more than one distinguished award in her time since she left here. As noted earlier, she was also a 1998 recipient of the Parker Multicultural Alumni Award, which would have been the second year that it was offered. Faith and family are priorities for Sharon. She's happily married to Marvin. They are the proud parents of three children and three grandchildren. Please join me in congratulating Sharon. I'm going to uh, start by asking you to celebrate with me one more time Pamela, Angela, Corey, uh, Wally, and uh, Linda. Would you celebrate them one more time for their accomplishments? A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Let's take that journey together and build a community where we put people first and politics last. That was, <laughs> that was part of a radio commercial when I ran for office, my first office in 1988 for city council. And as I reflect on my life, I often describe my life as an, being an ordinary woman on an extraordinary journey. And so I can tell you that I am thankful for every step on this journey including the four years I attended at UWL and returning to receive uh, the Graf Distinguished Alumni Award. I often tell individuals that if we look at our lives, we see there is a common thread or theme that has been woven in our lives probably from the time that we were in elementary school, through high school, and uh, then college. When I look back on my life, I see two common threads. One, a thread of leadership, and one, a thread of communications. When I came to UWL in 1974, it's been so long, I almost can't remember, <laughs> but in 1974, as a 17-year-old, it was here that 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 seed of communication uh, was nurtured, and the seed of leadership was also nurtured. And I have to give the seed of leadership uh, to Dr. Parker and Dr. Carter, who helped nurture that seed of leadership, and certainly to all of the members of the communications department where I worked at WLSU and where I had uh, a variety of public speaking classes that helped nurture that thread of communications. For quite a long time, I wouldn't talk a lot about my uh, journey because it's, it's been a very interesting uh, one. You see, I grew up in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, my parents were part of the Great Migration. Uh, my mother came from Mississippi to uh, Chicago. My dad came from Baton Rouge, Louisiana to Chicago. And so it was there that I grew up. But on that journey, my father always told me that I could be and do anything that I wanted in life. My mother always told me to love people, to love God and love your neighbor. And so it was there in Chicago that as a third grader that Mrs. Dozier sent us over to Mrs. Mobley's class and said, Mrs. Mobley is going to talk with you for a little while. 
we went over to Mrs. Mobley's class, and Mrs. Mobley began to unfold a story to us as third graders. And that story was about a young man who went to Mississippi, a young teenager, to visit his family, and there was murdered violently. Well, the woman who told me that story was Mrs. Mamie Till Mobley, Emmett Till's mother. Then my father took me to many marches where Martin Luther King was twice as a young child. Once I can remember as a seven or eight year old, he was holding me on his shoulders. So I, I firmly believe that those seeds help nurture where I am today as a leader. You know, it's been said that no one who achieves success does it without the help of others. And I have been enormously blessed to have a loving uh, and supportive family and some monumental friends. Joining me today, because I couldn't bring everyone from Baton Rouge, Louisiana to La Crosse. <laughs> but joining me today is the wind beneath my wing, my husband, Marvin Broom, and one of my three wonderful, magnificent children, Daniel Broom and his girlfriend, Raven. You know I love you guys a whole bunch. And, and so while I did not know uh, Dr. Graff personally, he undoubtedly left a lasting impression and an astounding legacy. Known for his intelligence, his integrity, and his sense of humor, He's been described as a natural born leader, an outstanding person in every way, and a man of great principle. One quote that I read about Dr. Graff caught my attention. It said that he didn't try to impress people by who he was, but you got impressed by what he knew and how he handled people. You see, Learning about the type of person that Dr. Graff was makes this honor even more significant. But it also challenges me to constantly live up to his example. You know, I have been in Baton Rouge now for nearly 40 years, and it's quite ironic that I would come back to the city where my dad was born and become the mayor of that city. I love Baton Rouge. We call it the Red Stick. It's the capital city. And it has a diverse citizenry and culture that makes it extremely special. For the past 30 years, I've had the honor to serve the citizens as an elected official. Now I will tell you, these 30 years have certainly included times of challenges, for public service is not for the faint of heart. Yet, it's recognitions like the one today, receiving this prestigious award, it serves to affirm what I describe as the call to public service. And it also serves to motivate me to do more with this amazing life that I've been blessed with. Someone said Dr. Graff was interested in helping everybody do better, helping them improve. Well, that's my mission as well in life. I want to utilize the common threads of respect, opportunity, fairness, inclusion, and optimism to weave a tapestry of growth and progress that touches every area in the city and parish that I serve, but touches everyone that I come in contact with. Kelly and Janie, thank you so much for all that you did to make this happen. Once again, to my colleagues, congratulations. And once again, thank you for this great honor. I will indeed cherish it.